Hello everybody. Today we're heading back to the automotive content and I went to a uh, local car show this past weekend and I just wanted to share some of the pictures with you quickly and <clears throat> I was surprised to see this car in a classic car show because I feel like I just worked on these cars just a couple of years ago. It's a 1985 Chevrolet Monte Carlo and when I first looked at this car I said you know, wouldn't it be cool if it didn't have these stickers on it and if it didn't have the stickers on the uh, back glass? I always thought it was just uh, such a clean look to have the maroon and silver two-tone, and I really like the wheels. I do have a uh, closer-up picture of this uh, car, and it was super clean, and it had 70,000 original miles on it. It was really cool. It had the center console. Sorry I didn't get a picture of that. But every time I see these cars, this is what I think of. They came with carburetors, which I'm a big fan of carburetors. I used to love carburetors. They provide good power. You could even get decent fuel economy out of them. But in 1985, the emission standards started kicking in, and they started throwing plastic parts into the carburetor. So they had this MC solenoid. And what it did was meter fuel into the carburetor so that and it was controlled by a computer in 1985 it was not much of a computer but it allowed the vehicle to pass emissions and it robbed the vehicle of horsepower for certain and they also threw this throttle position sensor in because you could see this is the throttle and then there was an internal throttle position sensor so if you can imagine how hot this carburetor gets sitting on top of a v8 engine these plastic parts did not hold up very well. Now, as a mechanic, um, you know, this was what we call job security, right? So, you know, I became, I used to be able to take these carburetors apart with, you know, blindfolded. Uh, but to move on, right next to this car, they also had a uh, 1960 Plymouth Fury. And this would be, you know, a Christine style car. I, I'm hoping that you saw the movie Christine. If you did not, you know, you, you got to see that movie. It's a fantastic movie. You know, a lot of times old movies do not port well to the present day, but Christine is such a classic. It's everybody would enjoy this movie if you like cars. So unfortunately, this was a four door version of that. But this car was like a time capsule. It had less than 50,000 miles on it and it was just super immaculate and, uh, yeah, it was a 1960, and it had a 350 V8 wedge engine. And what's um, interesting is, is in the movie, Christine was a 1957, uh, but you know, when they showed the engine, you could see that it had dual quads, which is two four-bow carburetors, and they put a 413 wedge engine uh, in Christine for the movie. So this was a 350 wedge engine, and basically in the coming years they just bored out this engine and turned it into the 413 cross ram air dual quad engine that the beach boys used to write songs about and it was just a legendary v8 engine um, not too many people remember it because just a year or two after that they came out with the 426 hemi which put that engine to shame so you know chrysler was on a roll but um, I always loved to see this engine, and it was immaculate. You could eat your lunch off this engine. The green and white was just classic uh, combination of colors, and this car just showed really well. And we'll keep moving on. Okay, I had one more shot of that. And, oh, yeah, that's right. I threw in a, This is what Christine looked like. The, this is a 1957, and you can see it was a two-door, but extremely similar with the fins or the whale tail or whatever you uh, want to call the rear fenders. It was just a beautiful car. So <clears throat> this next car is a 1959 Ford Thunderbird. And you can kind of see it had this town out cover that I'm going to talk about in a minute. But when I saw this car, I was thinking, wow, this is like Elvis's Thunderbird. But he actually had a 1960, I believe. And it also had the town out cover. So this was just an, a factory option that would turn your four seat family car into a 
two seat roadster and this fiberglass cover hung on the front seats and blended into the trunk so it looked like a one it looked very sleek and i'm going to show you a picture of exactly how sleek it looked but this was a gorgeous car and it had the wire wheels and the uh, wide white wall tires and black is a very difficult color but this car did not have any swirl marks it was a really bright sunny day and that will bring out all the swirl marks in a black car there was not a single mark in this car it was just amazing so uh, let me show you this town out cover look how sleek this looks it turns your four-seater into a two-seater two-seater roadster and you know it's painted with the same exact same color as the rest of the car this one also had the spare tire bumper carrier and that was really cool so this was just it just caught my eye i wanted to take pictures of it just showing you some pictures from the car show and you know again i was thinking elvis but his car was a year or two newer so this is the last car i wanted to show you and it's a uh, 1957 desoto <clears throat> and when i saw this car i thought it was the um what do they call that? The Ghostbusters ambulance, but it was actually a DeSoto, not a Cadillac. And this car was just beautifully restored. And um, the bright red color, you could see this car coming from two, three miles away with the lights and it had an extremely loud siren. And back in the fifties, they just did chrome so beautifully. And the chrome was immaculate on this car. Again, the pictures don't do it justice. But there was something else that I really liked about the presentation of this car was that it had all of the equipment from when it was in service. It had the gurney and some oxygen bottles and, um, you know, basically uh, equipment that the uh, EMTs uh, used at, back in the day. And it was um, meticulously restored. It was just a beautiful example of a 1957 DeSoto ambulance. So my next video that I'm going to talk about, I, I diagnosed a no start on my neighbor's car and it turned out to be a starter relay. So my next video is going to be about how a relay works. And you can see that this relay wound up having a physical crack in it. So I'm hoping that you can give this video a thumbs up and that you'll subscribe because not only do I have the relay video coming out there's another car show in the area and i have my video camera ready to go and i hope that you'll hit the notification bell so that you could see my latest car show video and any other videos that we launch on the channel thanks for stopping by today